Welcome everybody. We are so happy you are here for our workshop to discuss how technology can improve maternal health. I am Alana Goldberg and I'm a program director at the National Institute of Biomedical Imaging and Bioengineering. First, our the National Institutes of Health not sponsor or endorse the information shared or presented in the virtual environment, including any products or services. This material should not be interpreted as representing the viewpoint of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, the National Institutes of Health, or NIBIB, ORWH, NICHD, or the IMPROVE initiative. With that being said, I am honored to introduce three of our NIH leaders in this field. Dr. Trumberg is the director of the National Institute of Biomedical Imaging and Bioengineering. He oversees a portfolio of research programs focused on developing, translating, and commercializing engineering, physical science, and computational technologies. In addition, he leads NIBIB's Rapid Acceleration of Diagnostics, Rad Tech, Innovation Initiative to increase SARS-CoV-2 testing capacity and performance. He has co-authored more than 450 publications and holds 23 patents. Dr. Clayton is the Director of the Office of Research on Women's Health at NIH. She is the architect of the NIH policy required to consider sex as a biological variable across the research spectrum. She is a board certified ophthalmologist previously the Deputy Clinical Director at the National Eye Institute. In 2021, Dr. Clayton was elected to the Board of Directors of the American Association for the Advancement of Science. Dr. Bianchi. <laughs> Dr. Bianchi is the Director of the Eunice Kennedy Shriver National Institute of Child Health and Human Development. She oversees an annual budget of 1.5 billion to lead research and training to understand human developments, improve reproductive, enhance the lives of children and adolescents, and optimize abilities for all. She is a member of the Anatomy of Medicine and past president of the Perinatal Research Society. In 2020, she received the Health Public Vision for the, from the Society of Women's Health Research. And with that, Dr. Tromberg, I pass the mic to you. Thank you, Alana. And uh, welcome. Thank you all for coming. Um, special thanks to Alana, my colleague, and our entire NIBIB team for organizing today's workshop. Um, thanks also to our meeting co-sponsors, uh, Dr. Bianchi and Dr. Clayton, and the really incredible program committee team from, I, I think I counted about 13 different NIH institute centers and offices who've invited a truly impressive group of panelists and speakers for today. The goals of the meeting uh, are to bring together researchers, small businesses, technology developers, and community partners to collaborate and share their very unique perspectives. From the NIBIB point of view, of course, technologies are essential for all aspects of clinical care, but their focused development on maternal health will help us bridge gaps in performance and access, particularly for diverse populations. NIBIB's core mission is to engineer the future of health and the commercialization mechanisms we're promoting with this workshop are a very practical way to do this. But we also have other initiatives, and one of them that I'd like to draw your attention to is our $1 million National Technology Accelerator Prize Challenge. This is exclusively dedicated to maternal health. It's also co-sponsored by our colleagues at NICHD and the Office of Research and Women's Health. And you can find more information on this challenge in the program booklet. I will now pass the microphone to my friend and colleague, Dr. Janine Clayton. Thank you, Dr. Tromberg. And I'm really excited to be here today. And ORWH is particularly thrilled to be supporting this workshop to accelerate progress towards improving maternal health through technology. And we at ORWH, the Office of Research on Women's Health, employ an integrated life course perspective depicted on the slide here, meaning that each encounter in the life course of a woman must be viewed in the context of what came before and what will come after. 
And to that point, data demonstrate that pregnancy is one of just two places in a woman's life, menopause being the second, where we have a critical opportunity to intervene with important impacts for subsequent health. To that end, NIH seeks to connect the dots across the life course to drastically improve the health of women and uses a multidimensional approach to do so. For example, if a birthing person receives high quality pregnancy care, delivery will be safer, uh, such as using preventive blood pressure monitoring management to reduce complications of hypertensive disorders of pregnancy or innovative glucose level monitoring to detect gestational diabetes. And if postpartum women are linked to primary care, we would have a better chance of taking advantage of the window of opportunity of pregnancy, which reveals susceptibility to GDM, uh, for GDM to, excuse me, to lead to type two diabetes and preeclampsia to cardiovascular disease. Next slide, please. It is now broadly known that the United States is the most dangerous place in the developed world to deliver a baby. And this disparity is greatly increased in American Indian and black populations. In these groups, women are two to four times more likely to die from pregnancy related causes compared to white women. And these disparities also exist by age and geography with women over 35 and living in rural uh, areas at higher risk. To address these issues, the NIH Office of the Director in conjunction with the Office of Research on Women's Health and the Eunice Kennedy Shriver National Institute of Child Health and Human Development has also developed the Implementing a Maternal Health and Pregnancy Outcomes Vision for Everyone Initiative or IMPROVE Initiative to address the rising rates of pregnancy related deaths. We're, we're anticipating that technologies developed from workshops such as this and related efforts can be applied in the IMPROVE program and reduce maternal mortality across the US. And on February 15th, the improved correct program will be held, holding a workshop, so please make plans to attend. ORWH is also working across silos in a complementary manner with our partners to generate the evidence through rigorous research that's needed and study the implementation of evidence-based interventions. And workshops such as this allow us to develop innovative and thoughtful solutions that are effective for all populations. It's my pleasure to be here and to pass the mic to my colleague, Dr. Diana Bianchi. Diana? Thank you so much, Dr. Stromberg and Clayton. Uh, good afternoon, I'm Diana Bianchi and it's a true honor and pleasure to join my fellow directors in welcoming all of you to today's workshop. At the Eunice Kennedy Shriver National Institute of Child Health and Human Development or NICHD, less of a mouthful, our mission is to lead research and training to understand human development, improve reproductive health, enhance the lives of children and adolescents and optimize abilities for all. Our vision statement starts with healthy pregnancies and is followed by healthy children, healthy and optimal lives. As you can see from these statements, maternal health is a core component of NICHD's mission. Interestingly, even in our authorization language, when the Institute first started, the first words were maternal health. Our Institute supports research from preconception through pregnancy, delivery, and the postpartum period. We're interested in improving outcomes both at the individual and at the population level. And we're particularly focused on addressing racial and ethnic, socioeconomic, and geographic disparities. As Dr. Clayton already mentioned, NICHD co-leads the NIH's uh, IMPROVE initiative, and we support many other maternal health research projects and networks. And I'd also like to mention that the, there are many members of Congress who are interested in the IMPROVE initiative and are tracking our progress closely. For example, NICHD's Global Network for Women and Children's Health Research supports and conducts clinical trials in resource-limited countries by pairing both foreign and U.S. investigators with the goal of evaluating low-cost, sustainable interventions to improve maternal and child health. Through this network, we've observed and identified simple technologies that work very well in low and middle income countries. These successes can effectively be applied to low resource environments in the United States. For example, telemedicine models and point of care testing allows for improved access in rural areas. 
It also facilitates risk assessment and disease management, such as for preeclampsia, as well as equips pregnant people with everything they need to monitor their own pregnancy independent of their physical location or status. These technologies have been vital to aid maternal care during the pandemic with the use of telemedicine and telehealth helping to mitigate the effects of COVID-19 on prenatal care, especially in rural settings. Currently, people use apps on their phone to monitor their menstrual cycles, help them become pregnant, prevent pregnancy, and even physicians can do ultrasound scans through an app on their iPhones. This type of technology could be further developed to improve maternal health and importantly, to make access to and quality of care more equitable. Interventions that leverage tools to target the underlying drivers of disparities at the patient, clinician, and healthcare system levels potentially could reduce disparities in quality of care through the continuum of maternity care. I'm really excited about this workshop and I look forward to hearing what today's speakers have to say about these topics. I'd like to thank all of you for participating. I'll just be jumping back and forth due to some unfortunate conflicting uh, commitments, but I will be listening. And I'd also like to thank the workshop organizers and I look forward to great discussion. I'm now gonna turn the program back to Dr. Alana Goldberg, who will introduce our first speaker. Alana.